Did you know that 82% of you right now are watching on the one tool you could be using for training for TIG welding? It's your phone. It's not just for watching videos and it's not just for asking people on social media what you did wrong after your very first weld. It's actually a lot more versatile than that. Here's how. If you know how many infractions that was, go ahead and take your guess right now. I'm gonna throw in the answer, well, toward the end of the video. Let's talk about this. Now, in order to make just one single TIG weld, seven different things have to happen with your body in order to lay it all down properly. They're also independent of each other, but they have to be in synchronous harmony in order for it to all go right. That's actually a lot to process when you first start out. I mean, really think about it. One hand has to hold the torch while simultaneously traversing the part. The other hand has to hold the filler. We're not even talking about feeding it, just holding it while rocking your wrist back and forth to hit that leading edge of the weld pool just right every single time. Your foot, if you're using a pedal, has to control the amperage. Your brain has to process all of this stuff to tell all of your appendages what to do, all being given the feedback that comes from your eyes. That's a lot to take in. And when you're just starting out welding, you're missing one extremely important thing, feedback. Just about all of us have some sort of smart device on our hip, in our pocket, or in our hands right now watching this video. That's exactly what you need. Now when you set it up, try to set it up with the widest frame possible. In this case, I've got it relatively close on the standard frame, but if I go widescreen on it, I can see everything. I can see my foot pedal, I can see the machine, I can see the walls around me, and that's important. I want to see all of that. Now your phone absolutely can, this day and age, depending on the model and the technology and everything else you have with it, it can actually record an arc shot, but that's not really what you need to see. You personally are staring at that arc shot. What you want to see is everything around you that will indicate that you are screwing up somewhere. So make sure that it's as wide as possible. If your standard frame doesn't allow you to see all of that, move the camera further back. As soon as you have it set, start recording. Now the first thing that you want to do is lay down your control weld. At the start of every single session, just lay down whatever it is that you got. We're not trying to be fancy, we're not trying to, you know, score points on weld porn, none of that. Just lay down whatever it is that you got at the beginning of that session. Now each weld that you lay down after your control weld or further welds that you lay down, they're all going to go back and reference that control weld until you make one that's, let's say, better than the control weld. But the control weld is what you need to have in the beginning right when you get going. Do a new one at the start of every single session. Now as soon as you finish making that weld, go up to your camera, stop it, wait a couple seconds, then hit record again. All you gotta do is keep on making welds, one right after the other. Make sure that you stop them after each one of them so that way you know where you're at. Now I'm gonna run over a few different things, common problems and things that I see, and show you a few different ways you can use your phone to help you out. So with the few clips that I have, let's show you what to look for. Let's start with the weld on the left. That's my control weld. The weld on the right, that's the one I screwed up. Now normally you would be playing this back with your phone and looking at each one of them and taking some notes. In this case, I'm just gonna stick one on top, the control, and the one I screwed up down below, just so you can see the two as a side-by-side -side comparison. You can look right now and you can start seeing something going south really quick. I got two dead giveaways that my torch is starting to ramp up. Can you spot them? Let's start with the shot on the far left. Notice what you can and what you cannot see. What you cannot see is my hands, most of the table, about half of the face of my hood. It's so bright and so blown out because the arc is so friggin' bright, which usually only happens when there is a large gap or a big contact to work distance, meaning my torch head is way too high. 
you can also take a look at your surroundings. Notice in the picture on the right that we have an ominous glow on the wall on the weld that I screwed up, but it's not there on the control weld. This one to indicate that I definitely had way too much torch height going on and the arc was blowing out. Now, running with a high torch height is not by any means considered to be a good discipline when it comes to welding. However, if we were in control, we might have been able to maybe not make it blow out so bad the way that it did toward the end. So if I scrub back and look at some of my footage and zoom in on my foot, you notice it doesn't move. That means I had absolutely zero control over this weld whatsoever. I just kept it flat out and ran it. Additionally, we can listen to the audio. If you listen very carefully, you'll notice that the arc on the weld that I screwed up on is way louder than the arc of the control weld. Those are some things that you can be paying attention to when you're actually playing back and analyzing your welds. Now, there is a whole lot going on under the hood, and while you're concentrating and staring at all of this stuff, you tend to miss a few things. One of those things that I see constantly people missing is dipping the tungsten. Yeah, obviously, if you just take the tungsten for uh, you know good old smasher right onto the uh, coupon before you even step onto the pedal, that one's pretty obvious. Sometimes it's easy to miss the auditory clues that say, hey, something's not right here. message as it is received at Wellington. All the operator has to do is gum the message on a standard form as it comes from the machine. I don't know why people miss that one, but they often do. Or they say, why is the machine cutting out? Well, you play it back and you notice that you took your tungsten for a swim 3,800 times. Well, that means that you're gonna have to pick your torch up just a little bit. There's also another one that people tend to miss often, and there's some dead giveaways and some really solid clues after you weld, but not necessarily how or why when you're welding because people tend to miss it. It's called the Q-tip. Watch and listen carefully. I zoomed in a little bit on this clip. If you ever see this on the end of your weld, you have a Q-tip. A Q-tip is just a fancy way of saying that you sent the filler straight into the tungsten instead of straight into the puddle. Now, a lot of people miss this for whatever reason. Not really sure how, not really sure why. But rest assured, you can definitely roll your footage back when you look at your video and you can see that moment. Of course, looking at the end of your weld, you can see that that's happened. That's the only way to make that look on something like aluminum. On steel, it's a little bit less obvious, which is why the footage is useful. Now, just in case you wanted to know, if you ever tried a weld with a Q-tip or a dirty tungsten like that, this is the result. And this is about what it looks like. So just in case you're playing your footage back, and you didn't bother checking your tungsten, or your weld, or you want to know where that big giant black spot came from, it's the Q-tip. Nothing at the end of the day will ever replace the feedback you get from hands-on, personal, one-on-one -on -one type of instruction. That's something that we offer here at TFS. Now, if you're interested in taking a class, there's always a flight to Vegas, and we train six days a week in different time slots, different metals, and all kinds of things that you can learn here. All you gotta do is show up. So if you wanna learn in a hurry, that's your best option. That's gonna wrap it up for this episode. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time, hopefully here. <laughs>